guys, we did a Colorado Trail through hike this, Ju this June 27th to July 30th, 2016. And I wanted to just go over some things that we used and were useful and some things that we maybe didn't quite need, although we did a pretty good job with um, packing what we thought we needed and, and used. So first of all, we sent ourselves some resupply boxes to a bunch of places. The book is really good about saying where and they're easy to get to, uh, but these are the ones that we chose. At the last second, we didn't want to carry seven days worth of food because we realized we couldn't fit it and it would be too heavy. So we quickly found Bailey as our first stop and then the other ones were, were um, picked already. We stopped in Breckenridge and Leadville and Salida Lake City and Silverton. And those worked out great. We sent the boxes. We didn't mail them. We had a friend drop them off. They were there unopened. Everything was, was fine. We had put our name on it when we were expected to arrive. And I think that's always helpful for the people there. I didn't contact all of them, only contacted a few of them. So they just are used to getting boxes. There's just lots of boxes there. So I just thought I'd go through my bag. It's a 35 pound bag that I carried with a bottle of water. Um, that was the full weight with a bottle of water. And I just thought I'd go through and, and show you what I packed. First of all, I had a clip here. It was great because we ate a lot of chips and I had a chip clip. So that was the first thing. Uh, things that I wanted to get to easily I put up here. So I had uh, my mosquito net. That was actually very useful about four or five different times for the black flies and the mosquitoes. And this is where I kept the toilet paper and Kleenex, and we definitely used that. We also had up here our sign that we did use. So through hike to the trail, and then we flipped it over or made another one through hike. To town. We did some hitchhiking. Maybe our longest wait was 10 minutes. So we were able to do that. Um, I put the morning snacks up here so we wouldn't have to dig into our bag. We just already, already have the snacks for the next time up there. We put a garbage bag in our whole bag just so that we thought there'd be a lot of rain. Thankfully, we didn't get a lot of rain, but uh, it definitely kept our stuff dry because later on in the trip, we took them out. We thought they were a little heavy, so uh, my husband took his out, and he did get his sleeping bag wet a couple nights, but nothing major at all. Then we each carried a bag of food, and in the bags, they I had separated put a number of what day it was, put a paper in there telling what the food was, and then the food inside was labeled MS for morning snack, uh, L for lunch, so we knew which snacks went with lunch when we were supposed to eat it, AS for afternoon snack, and D for dinner, and you know, if there was a snack, put D for dinner on it. And so we did that, put them in order, of course, and we both carried, so I carried half the food, two days, two days, and we usually stopped in town every four days. We had a, my husband decided that it would be a good idea to just kind of separate everything. So these are, this is what I used for my clothes. I had a hat, a winter hat that I did wear a couple nights sleeping. And I also wore it over one of the passes. That was pretty um, cold. Then I had a sweatshirt and that was definitely useful going over the pass and then just right when I would get into where we were going to camp. Um, for the girls I had um, I just wore two two different sports bras those are definitely what I would suggest. I had three pairs of underwear, two pairs of socks, and I ended up having a pair of socks to sleep in at night, girls. And we had long johns. This is where I kept my lamp, my headlamp. Didn't even barely use it. We were so exhausted, we'd get into camp and 
pretty much just fall asleep. I brought a pair of gloves that I never wore. And we had a towel that I think I used once when we were in Buena Vista, the hot springs. Other than that, we were able to use the towels that they had at the hostels. Some hostels would charge you for towels, but if you got a couple's room, the towels were included. So we ended up using our towel once. Also in our bag, I have my puffy jacket, which I wore a lot. So that was definitely something I was afraid of being cold. So got my puffy jacket. Pillow. We both had a pillow. We figured we just hiked 16 and a half miles, which was average. Three days we walked 19 miles. Three days we walked 20 and a half miles. We wanted a pillow. So this was definitely worth it for us. I made myself a sleeping bag insert so that I just don't like the feel of my sleeping bag itself. So I made myself a sleeping bag insert that actually could go over my head, especially for feeling warm. Um, that was, I had made one previously that was a little too short, but this one just wrapped around my head and I loved having this. My sleeping bag, I also used to have in a stuff sack, but I decided to get rid of that just for weight towards the end. And so my husband's sleeping bag and my sleeping bag zip together. They're down. Um, they're kind of heavy. They're north face, uh, let's see, 15 degrees Fahrenheit. When we zip together, that was my, my other concern was being cold. So we were pretty toasty every single night. There wasn't a night that we were cold at all. I was the one that carried the poles, and my husband carried the tent. How do you want to come tell them, kind of get that tent out and tell them what kind of tent it is? I carried a, when it did rain, this was very convenient for me. I had this for about 12 years, never even touched it, but this is my, for raining, and it fit right over my pack and covered my entire pack, which I knew some people got those cheap ones that they wouldn't cover. But this thing is from, well, it's from EMS, and like I said, it's at least 12 years old, so I don't know what they carry anymore, but this thing was easy. And I would often just put it on the side of my pack um, in case it was going to rain. I would just be able to grab it, and which we did a few times where you just grabbed it, you put it on, it poured, and then you took it off. So it's very convenient. That's what was inside my pack. On the front of my pack, for convenience, I had my hat and my sunglasses, which I used every day. And we also had our book in a bag with a pen. And so each night I would write down what we saw that day, whether it was wildlife or what the weather was like, how much we hiked, where we camped. And so that kind of just gives us a log on the actual segment. We also carried a phone with a charger. So of course, for in town, and then this is a Goal Zero, and it can fully charge my iPhone two times or three times? About two times. And uh, we never had issues with my phone or the camera running out of charge. It's, it's kind of heavy, but it was definitely worth it when you were getting closer to town. We had a couple friends pick us up, so we wanted to make sure we were able to contact them. I had a water bottle here and a water bottle here. And then I had another Nalgene bottle that I used. We had tang each night, so I'd make tang and we would have that for dinner and save some for the breakfast. And so that was always, for some reason, something I craved. Tang was delicious. Brought these. These are for your sneakers. They keep out the rocks and the sand and actually keep your socks a little bit cleaner, which your feet get super dirty. So 
kept your feet a little cleaner, and they were very, they're very lightweight. They were great to have, especially if it was uh, had rained and you kick up a lot of the dirt. We had moleskins, band-aids, Advil, safety pins. One time I wore a size 16 skirt at one of the hostels. They have clothes that you could change into so you could wash your clothes. I put a size 16 skirt on, so I needed a safety pin. And my husband sent home his belt. His belt was kind of bothering him on his pack, where he buckled his pack, and so his belt was there also. So he sent his belt home. He used the safety pin. Um, so definitely had emergency pack. Sunscreen, use that. Use that every day. You're so high. You're so high in the mountains. You're so you're out there all day long. You definitely need sunscreen. This my husband had a knot on his neck, and I picked this up in one of the hostels. They have a lot of times. Look for this. They have a lot of places where they people drop stuff off. They don't want to carry it anymore. Whether it's these kind of things or food. And so I saw this sitting here. It's called Real Time, and it smells actually really good, and it works pretty good. And he had a knot from carrying his pack every single day and he would just rub this on and it would, it would soothe it a little bit. So that worked really well. Let's see what else we have. Definitely carried Kleenex and carried mosquito spray. We used our mosquito spray a lot and I put it in my little pouches where I could easily get to them. Chapstick was definite, and let's see what else I have in here, if I have anything else. Oh, yes, Advil. So I just have one of these and just easily, so I could easily access that. So I put that in my hip belt. These were awesome. We've never used these before. These were our pads. We both ended up getting them. We have expensive ones, but we didn't want to blow them up every single night, and we're thankful we brought these. We could pull these out at lunchtime. We could pull these out under a tree and take a nap. Um, we didn't have to worry about the pine needles popping this. So this was extremely handy and it definitely went through a lot. It used to be a lot thicker <laughs> and it didn't have as many holes. So this was a, a lifesaver. We just put this on the outside of our pack. Shower shoes and also camp shoes we used every single night. We had a, um, we both put um, antibacterial hand soap on the outside of our bags. That was pretty, that was pretty helpful for us. And I think that's it for me. Kevin, do you want to talk about, do you want to talk about um, the water? All right, yeah, sure. All right, so hey there, um, Kevin, and uh, let's see, trail name Smeller, and she forgot to say her trail name was Patches, which she was going through that uh, moleskin and stuff pretty often. Anyway, she was just showing you the trekking poles. We did both carry trekking poles. We thought about sending those home for weight because we often hike without them, uh, but we found that they were a real big help uh, just for our legs and stuff to get through those long miles. And so I definitely say uh, get a set of trekking poles if you're not used to using those. I use a regular rain jacket, whereas my wife used a poncho. Uh, this worked really well on um, the few times that it rained. Um, I also had trekking poles, and I just didn't have them on the side of my pack when I was using them. So, yeah, you got those. And then she mentioned using water, so I'll talk about that real quick. You saw she already had a smart water bottle. Well, we carried two of those. Um, Sawyer. We used to have a pump filter, but I read up on Sawyer system and I really liked what they had to say. So they come with bags. Um, I lost the cap in the river, but I had another one. The smart water bottles, uh, the soda bottles, their caps work with these. And so I carried that. Um, we did make sure that we marked, we had two of these, and I marked one as a clean bottle. And so we said it was too pretty to not drink from. And then this one was just the dirty water. Much easier to gather water with this out of the streams than it is with this. But we did find that if you blew it up and to avoid getting, you know, giardia or whatever water uh, sickness you can get, 
I put my hand around it and blow it up uh, as best I could so not put my mouth right on it. But a bottle works better and uh, so you fill this up, fill this one and then attach the filter which I don't know if I still have in here. But the Sawyer filter, which I kept in a bag, so because the water, if you keep it unattached, will leak from the bottom. And so I had other things in here. But anyway, I put it in a bag. But if you connect these two together and squeeze, it works really good. It's pretty quick. And uh, whenever I was in town, I back flushed this with the syringe that comes with it. And uh, kept it working fine. And we never had any real problems at all with water, um, other than there's a couple dry spots on the trim. I did bring rope, um, probably too much rope, but I suppose you never know how much you need. And uh, this nice little night eyes uh, connector here for bear bagging. Uh, bear bagging is not always easy on the Colorado Trail, but uh, we did as much as possible. So probably 90% of the time we try to get it up in a tree. And if not, we had to put it in our garbage bag, in our pack and try to keep those smells down. No problems with wildlife for us, uh, but that's what we did. Uh, this is the cleaning the syringe that comes with the Sawyer filter, so I have that. Uh, headlamps, again, only use them very little, barely at night, and so we have that. Um, I had a friend let me borrow his inReach. I saw that a lot of people on the trail had this really popular, it seemed like. Uh, pretty cool for uh, keeping track of where you are or sending out a map so your friends can follow you. So we know we had family who were following us. They can send you texts and you can send texts back depending on the plan you purchase. And so I know people use Spot. Uh, we just happen to use this and I really liked it. It was encouraging to get messages on the trail and to hear from our family and friends. So I'd recommend that one. I think it was really good. I saw a chapstick. Um, did have a hat. I think that in addition to sunblock, having a hat is also really key. Uh, you see a lot of guys with uh, baseball hats, which I guess is fine. It's cool. I like to wear those. Uh, I'm not always a huge fan of bucket hats, but when you're up that high and the sun's on you all day, this really does a great job to protect your neck. And your um, ears. And your ears. And so, you know, I suggest it. I had a pack cover. Um, so I had lined my pack and then I put a pack cover on and uh, the two together worked great. Um, so there's that. I also had a little bit of clothes, um, pretty much like my wife. I had long johns and another pair of shorts that I could wear in town. Really lightweight. A uh, couple things that I sent home, um, which we'll show, is my fleece. And I didn't really need that because I already had a puffy jacket. So I figured out that that would be fine. I did have a pair of gloves that, like my wife, didn't need. So I just carried them with me, extra weight. I used them once and they got wet and everything and so there's that. And then I had one of these, this was basically my hat, uh, it's like a buff, so uh, there's that. And I kept it in a dry bag because I didn't want anything to get wet. It's probably overkill with my whole system that I had. Stakes for the tent, carried. I took out the ones I knew I wouldn't need and just tried to keep the ones I had. My liner, one of those uh, Thermalite reactors, which again, we were plenty warm with our bags zipped together. I suppose if you're uh, not going to be able to do that, if you're solo hiking, then I recommend one of these really light. You can get lighter ones too, and uh, definitely uh, nice for those cold nights. High altitude. The luxury item was the pillow, and so just that. There are other ways to do pillows. You probably do a stuff sack, uh, but we just chose to enjoy the the pillow to have it already. Uh, marmot down jacket just put in the stuff sack and was able to find that real easily. Then uh, my cooking system. I know since it was two of us we were cooking for two I did get a dualist and I uh, had a windscreen. A lot of guys probably wouldn't use the windscreen. You could just get foil uh, or just use uh, the rocks that are there. A lot of campsites that were there that were available had rocks and rings and stuff and so you probably shelter it that way instead of using one of these uh, just clips to your fuel. But anyhow, this has um, a set for two. So I had my stove in there. Maybe I'll even just show you the stove that I had. And uh, I'll try to wrap this up here real quick. Uh, wash basin, probably don't need that. It's extra, it was just kept everything together. 
but I did go to a store and get a really light stove. You see all kinds of stuff, people use jet boils, but I uh, just had this little guy with a small can. We saw people with big cans. Uh, my wife and I were able to use small can for four days uh, with cooking um, water for breakfast and then dinner. Uh, a lot of those uh, freeze dries or pasta or whatever we did. And so one of these little guys, 110 grams, lasted us four days, three or four days. And then we had new ones in our boxes when we resupplied. So they can be expensive when you get to those mountain towns. So I think it's the best way is to send that ahead. And then lastly, well, obviously I had my, my sleeping bag and then our marmot tent, which we purchased new for this trip. It cut down the weight from our kind of four season tent that we had, it was about 10 pounds. This one was about four. And so we split the poles in the, um, this part with, with my wife. And so it was about half. We could sit up. Uh, we could sit up in it because it was a little bit taller. I know this, there's some, a lot of people do minimalist stuff and they like to be in bivy bags or they have tarp tents. A lot of those set up really low. So I don't know how comfortable they are, uh, but I knew they provide you the shelter you need. But we really appreciate that when you're hiking with two people, just be able to uh, have a tent big enough to put your packs in. Change. Uh, to be able to change in and sit up in if you had to get in the tent for weather reasons. So um, yeah, this turned out to be really nice, Marnet or a two-person tent and uh, that's really just about it we had I had a sleep pad as well and antibacterial soap and I think that's all we had a pack was a they're both were 60 liter packs some people get away with the 55 liter and obviously there's those lightweights that are out there through hiking um, you come across CDT people they have very lightweight gear uh, but they've got a lot further to go and this is 486 miles and so we were able to, to make do with with a little extra weight and knowing that we we're going to get into town uh three four days at a time so uh if you got any questions wherever just go ahead and uh, leave us a comment at the bottom and uh, when we're able to we'll see if we can respond to those hike your own hike uh just remember to hike your own hike uh there if you're competitive that's fine but there's people of all different speeds and uh, it's just more fun just to get to know people and say hi on the trail, ask them about their trail names, how they got them, uh, to share stories. How'd you get uh, your trail, trail name? And so my trail name's Smeller because I pretty much always was smelling everything. Uh, four days for me was uh, ripe and I thought, okay, uh, we did use those uh, wash wipes. That's how we took care of uh, cleaning up. I may, may or may not recommend that. You can ask about it, um, but that's how we did it. So anyway, have a good time, enjoy your hike, and again, feel free to leave a comment or to like it. We'll, we'll see you later, thanks.